Hey guys, this is Kid Rob speaking and today we are continuing our journey through the 80s of the light campaign open beta in automation, the car company tycoon game. And uh, this time around with a proper company, which is producing quite a few different models. We are producing our Hockenheim, the Dresden, which is like the premium luxury vehicle, and then the Dresden Lux, which is the ultimate luxury vehicle. And as that flagship just has come into production, it is time to start a new design for a replacement of exactly this one. Uh, so we need to... Ah, probably we want to uh, wait until 1984 so that new tech can um, tick over and we get a few new things because August is a little late in the year. So let's do that first. Let's wait and tick over. And here we go. Year stats. Oh no, another fr fr 300 million in taxes basically. Uh, that hurts, but I think we have everything we need for this replacement as we are not upgrading the factory and we soon need to look into an even larger production or something because this uh, is... Uh, oh no, we did do that for the Dresden Mark II. We upped the production quite significantly and that is right around the corner. So the factories should be closing down very soon and uh, getting into production. The Hockenheim is exactly one... Uh, or Mark II of the Hockenheim is exactly one year later, so we won't be witnessing that, but we are going to design the Dresden Lux uh, successor and then jumping to see how the production of the Dresden Mark II is going. So let's stop this right here and design the successor. Oh, look at that! Oh, look at that! That is a new car body. And it is amazing. Uh, but we can't really do anything with it. We could design like this monster of a car into a ultra luxury vehicle, but the problem with this is that it really only becomes a utility vehicle because there's so much storage in it. Uh, you can't really use that for this purpose. What more vehicles? Oh no. <laughs> this one? Is this one still the most recent one? Oh, it looks like it. So uh, let's then design the uh, Dresden Lux Mark II. <laughs> let's put an even larger engine into it so that it seems like a new thing. Yay! Let's make it smaller. Oh no, we wanted to make it as large as possible. Well, it is our flagship build, so uh, I think last time we went with a 6.5 liter engine and this time around we could go with an even larger build as we are not revving that high. Uh, maybe a little bit extra bore might help. Like this, and we drop this one a bit. 7 liter engine! That does sound perfectly right to me. All right, uh, we have to choose alloy heads and let me just put together our standard engine here. Oh, we are straggling, uh, strangling things a little bit. Uh, 228 horsepower. That seems a f like a familiar figure, but look at the exhaust strangling there at this red line. Wow, that's pretty bad. And we Oh, but look at the reliability. That is really good. So we should be able to catch back on some of the lost reputation in the past few years. And even that out a bit. Um, let me up the exhaust slightly. This is looking better. Although I want to have a bit more grunt down below so that it's more comfortable to drive. This is too much, I feel. Yeah, this is a little too much. But this is really good. So strangling the engine when you need it and are we happy? No we aren't because we need to fill the fuel octane. So octane, there we go and fill the rest with ignition timing and we are... can we rev a little higher? Yeah, that is not a problem. That is a problem. Alright. 
Of course we could put this one in, but then again it's not the most comfortable one. Um, so no, we are going with an open diff that is still superior. Wow, 19 inch rams? 19 inch? Now nah, that is really cool. Look at this ride, man. Isn't this dope? Yep, it is. And I think we have a little bit of trouble here getting the wheel size in. Uh, 235s would be maximum at this. We're still at a profile height of 50, which is reasonably comfortable, so I'm not too fussed about this. And those need to be out a little bit. Yep. Good. Vented discs, um, I think from last time we <laughs> 400 mil. <laughs> 400 mil, no, that's, that's overkill. Uh, we don't need that. And one in the rear, like 250 or something. And let's see what more we have. Uh, leave cooling at maximum. We don't want to be too fast. Seat bug, or not bug, but balancing issue. So we go with two seats only. And now, maximum what we have. Everything is... Oh, traction control. No, we don't need that. Also, that probably costs us a lot of tech pool. Oh, it doesn't? What? Tech 4? No, exactly. That's all good. Um, so advanced safety and hydropneumatic because that is that is what we are known for. No currywurst all over the car when you are riding over bumps. By the way, that is uh, the uh, the original story for how this was developed. Um, it was Wilhelm McSpeck riding in in one of the prototype cars he was uh, developing with his engineers and uh, well he can't leave his his grubby fingers from currywurst and he hit a speed bump and like the whole car was a mess the engineers were fucking pissed at him and um, so that led him to sit down one evening well uh, he never really got up and uh, design the new suspension type which would Get rid of such problems. Oh, yep, decent um, tuning to start out with. I'm pretty happy with this. 4.2 roll angle, that's also good. Uh, what about the gearing? Oh, gearing is good. Uh, we have a little bit too much wheel spin. Yeah, I think this is this is a good compromise. Could always put this one on, but then. Uh, yeah, no, this doesn't even help much. Uh, and we would lose comfort. And that's a no-go. Ah, this is getting closer. So even smaller tires there. Can up there put the tires out more. And more camber in the rear. That should get us down to one. There we go. Uh, looks like a good build. So do we have any bottoming out? Nope, we don't. Can we lower it? No, we can't. That was pretty much spot on. Yeah, let's leave it there. And brakes. Brakes is the last thing we need to do. Uh, we do need more front brakes. And we do have the space to put them in. Well, that's good. And more rear brakes. And that is much better already. 280s. Yeah, yeah, 280s makes sense. So now, this is the Dresden Lux Mark II. And here we have the naming all done. So let's move on. Four years development time. And mm, yeah, I think what we can do here is just up the reliability a little bit. Uh, it's looking good, 410, and now we can spend a bit more money to pull it back. We don't need this model that early because we just put the other one into production, uh, but this might be a little bit too much. 4.3 years, let's go with 4.3, sounds good. And then we can make this one more reliable. 4.3, put a bit of money into this, and up to 4.3 again. There we go. So costs are 177 million and 148.9 million. Mm, sounds expensive, but at least we are making a reliable car now. 
So Dresden Lux is the only one uh, which we can choose for this, which is perfect because that's the one we want to replace. And that would be Family 11, I guess. All right, what can we do to this production here? We can uh, just retool it for a minor amount, or you could even sell it a little bit, but then, uh, well, we get higher costs per car. So no, let's keep it at this really high, nice standard. We could up this one, but that doesn't make it much better. Just would increase quality, the tooling quality, which increases the, uh, the overall quality of the car production, which would make perfect sense, but this is uh, not a part of the light campaign yet. Maybe it will be in version 2 of the light campaign, but that is up to your choosing. So let's see for the engine factory. How many engines do we need? Well, 30 here and 26 there. And maybe if we want to upgrade this one, this doesn't cost us much. And then we can run this at a lower shift value, which does that make sense? Not really, does it? No, not really. It's pretty close anyway, so I think we go with this. Uh, we produce 30... Uh, 40, 42 is the answer to everything after all. So we produce 42 engines. Do we get up there? Do we get up there? No, we don't. Let's not do this. This is cheating. 40 will be everything we need. All right, 40. Oh, let's, let's produce a high 40 instead of 40.1 so that we don't have massive amounts of engines lying around. 40.1 and... 40. Very good. Coolies. Oh, uh, look at that. Look at that. Convertible premium luxury. Luxury premium isn't even on the board right now. What the hell is going on? Did we do something wrong? No, I don't think so. Oh, let's mark it up. Ah, there we go. <laughs> yep. That is pretty decent. At, uh, oh no, that's a little bit too high. At a markup of 240%, we still have 114 competitiveness score for this one. But maybe we want to edge a little bit lower so that the luxury segment can get some. And the luxury GT premium is doing reasonably well too. So 200% markup may be the better option. Yeah, luxury buys won't happen. But uh, a few in convertible luxury, it seems. So, selling... Yeah, not that many cars. Ooh, that's pretty bad. We might have to lower our pricing a little bit afterwards. But uh, for now, let's just go with this. Let's see what, um, what the total says. So, grand total is just 370 million that's that's ba basically nothing and it only takes seven months to break even at this markup and yeah why not let's let's go with that so now we have designed everything until uh, i think well what is coming out next the dresden mark ii our big production and this leaves engineering at the end of the year so let's fast forward until there. <laughs> Ouchies! Look at that economy! Yep, that is the uh, bust I was talking about. Uh, it's going pretty terrible in Gasmia now again, but I don't think the fall will be that deep. It should flatten out and become more normal again. Well, it is still that bad. So, um, the party is over, it seems. The party is over. And that will be another big drop coming here. But first, our production has started for the Dresden Mark II. Let's see how that goes in the middle of a big, big recession. And, uh, well, production has started, right. Nothing yet. And yearly summary. Taxes, zero, because we have lost money for the huge upgrade we had to put the Dresden Mark II through. And uh, that's good. That is just good. No taxes is always good. And now we are producing 
Uh oh, <laughs> the recession takes its toll. We just made a little profit here and we are stacking up on uh, the Dresden Mark II. That is a lot of cars that didn't sell. A lot of cars. So the question is what do we do with them? And does the economy get back on track or not? Uh, it seems to be flattening out here. Let's take a look at the other categories. Oh, the commercials are ticking up again. That's a good sign. That is a good sign. Let's see how the market size are here. Yes, they are on the uptick. That usually means that they are to, to follow. If you want to see how the economy will be in the future instead of how it is now, look at um, these segments down here, the indus industrial segments. Uh, that is a much better indicator. And they are, well, limping behind, really. So let's take a final look here. Um, this certainly is a problem. We could lower the price, but then again, uh, we have so much cash lying around and the production has just started. So a little bit of stockpiling certainly doesn't hurt us, especially as we are selling two thirds of these cars and still making a profit and waiting for better times to sell off the rest, basically. All right, um, next thing up will be the production of the Hockenheim Mark II. And once that one goes into production, I think we want to design a new Dresden Mark III or something, depending on what bodies are available. A new premium vehicle that goes into this large Farinian factory we have. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed and see you next time.